Nevermore was created as a safe haven for our children to learn and to grow, no matter who or what they are. Should we meet your new roommate? Are you feeling okay? You look a little pale. Of course, this is about being different, and Wednesday is so sure of herself. What would you say to someone who is maybe not so sure of themselves, but aching to kind of be themselves? Nobody is sure of themselves, <laughs> so don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah give it, you, you get older, you get used to it. But I think it's also important not to not to hold yourself back or, or not to be too difficult on yourself. You know, I was actually talking about this the other day because I feel like everybody has those certain qualities to themselves that they can't stand. Yeah. Oh my God, I hate it when I start speaking loudly. I hate how much I talk with my hands. I hate whatever. So, I'm so sorry. But there, I feel like there are certain parts of you that are undeniably you. It's that nature virtue, nurture, nurture conversation, conversation. I feel like it's, it's a mix. It's a mix of everything. And, and um, you just got to start embracing that stuff because the sooner you stop thinking about that, the more you can focus on what's in front of you. I feel like oftentimes uh, life moves fast. And if you're not present and you're not aware, it's, um, I don't know, you're going to look back and think, man, what was I thinking? So don't do that. How does it feel to be kind of a part of um, this ongoing kind of namesake of yours, playing, not playing Wednesday, but being involved with it again? Yeah, it's so fun. I was so flattered and happy to be asked to come back and be a part of this. It's so fun to watch somebody as talented and self-possessed as Jenna play this part. And um, I'm excited. I feel like every generation should have their own Wednesday. So I'm thrilled for the young people. Well, you know, I get very proprietary with those things. So I'm like, I don't know who, who's going to be the new Wednesday. And then when they said it was Jen, I was like, okay, that works. That works. Did you get a chance to kind of work with her, like talk to her about her version of Wednesday? Um, we we work together quite a lot. Um, a lot of, most of my scenes, I think, are with Jenna. Um, she didn't need to talk to me about how to play this part. She had this part down from the second I bet she stepped on set. I came a couple months after they'd already been filming um, but it was just so fun to watch her uh, embody this part and to do it with such incredibly incredible dignity and again like I said she's so self-possessed and, um, and that's really what is at the core of Wednesday this woman this girl who knows who she is refuses to change for anybody um, refuses to be influenced by any of the crappy things as women we have to be influenced in the society so to see all of that and carried on and done so beautifully really made me happy now you've kind of answered this a little bit but of course we at pride we love differences and people who celebrate their differences what would you say to someone who is maybe a little uncomfortable in their skin and not sure how to be themselves you know i think that really this is the time if you know more so than ever before and lean in what is special about you you know we are celebrating differences now nobody wants to see the same boring stuff we've seen before and um, you know if you can do something no one else can do do it tell us about um, basically a relationship with Wednesday between Larissa and Wednesday so Larissa and Wednesday it starts off and it's a very conventional situation of, of teacher and student um, and then things slowly become a lot more complicated because of course Wednesday is the child of Larissa Weems' roommate Matisha Adams where she's had an extraordinarily tense and complicated relationship where Larissa Weems has always ended up being in the shadow and second best and then she thinks maybe somehow she can forge a relationship with Wednesday and she can reform her and maybe Matisha will always be for eternally grateful for her but Wednesday Adams is much more than Larissa Weems ever could have imagined and so on her hand she has her biggest challenge yet and she is forced to confront everything she thinks about herself her students relationships what love means and uh, the relationship becomes a lot more complicated and questioning than either of them could ever have thought I want to ask you about Larissa and Morticia because they love each other they hate each other you ultimately trust um, her with Wednesday but there's still something there how would you kind of sum up their relationship beginning of the question oh just the relationship between Larissa and Morticia oh, oh yeah. well, well it's, it's school girls 
that always had a little bit of a <laughs> and I think that she always had a little bit of a for for Morticia and I think Morticia just went away and, and it knew how to press her buttons you know so in a few of the scenes I don't know whether you've seen yet I whine Marissa and she's uh, you know she's a little she's Morticia's like was good at tennis good at everything you know and she was always playing catch up and I think that's the dynamic you play the iconic in my heart Pugsley but I noticed you don't have the shaved head were you like no thank you no no no, 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 no thank you. he's like no absolutely not but I love this kind of new version of Pugsley for you how did you kind of decide what to put into him who is Pugsley to you um I feel like he's he's an outsider to the outsiders he's of an Adams than the rest of them. Yeah. Um, and you'll see that in a few scenes in this series. And um, I just, uh, I felt like incorporating more emotion into this Pugsley. So tell me about how Pugsley sees Wednesday. When he looks at Wednesday, I know, you know she's a big sister, but how does he see her in your eyes? Um, he looks up to her. And she, um, and she looks over him, you know. <laughs> she, she, uh, she plays it off. She plays it cool with him. She, like, she like brushes him off. But on the inside, she really cares. Yeah. Well, what's your favorite thing about the Adams family? Um, just um, how they don't realize that they're weird. Like, like they don't realize that like taking like um, insults as arguments isn't normal. Like, not like like. Thinking a rainy day is a good day. Yeah. Not normal. Well, you know, with Pride.com, we deal with a lot of people who are different. And I love that the Adams are different and they kind of have that going for them. What would you say to someone who is maybe different but feeling a little uncomfortable? How would you kind of tell them to be themselves? Comfort in. There you go. It's, it's, it's fun to be different. It's good to be different. Yes. yes. Tell me how you got involved with this project. I just, it was like deep COVID. I just, and then kind of didn't hear anything for like five months mm -hmm. and then they were like hey do you want to you know go to Romania next week for seven oh. months so I'm like yes I do sure it's that fast and then That's... I just moved to Romania for seven months now are you a fan of like the original movies and that yes. kind of thing what oh was God. it like kind of being a part of the reboot it was amazing and it was amazing that Christina Ricci was in it yeah like that's just so cool the screen does so and happy Garfield and Oates actually wrote a song for the Adams Family movie oh yes so we were like in that universe already and yeah and it was amazing working with Tim Burton that was just like yeah. crazy just a dream yeah well you are so fun on the show Thank there are you. so many twists and turns tell us kind of what we have to look forward to with your character specifically well my character is Wednesday's therapist mm. and she hates me yeah. <laughs> I'm like the opposite of Wednesday mm. I'm like very tall and like bright and she's very small and dark and uh -huh. we kind of hate each other so you know and then it then it changes your character has an arc where I was like rooting the whole time. It was so satisfying. Tell us your character and then what her, their powers are. I play a girl named Enid Sinclair. She's a werewolf, but she's a bit of a late bloomer, so she's a little bit frustrated with herself because she only has her claws. Uh, but yeah, she's trying to figure herself out and try to grow into her werewolf Tell us what, how fun was it to have the nails? Oh, it was really fun. Uh, Actually, I'm trying they're, to kind of they're win CGI, love, so all I had to do was sit there and act oh. like I had really that nails, and then they did the rest of the work, but I, yeah, it was I'm fun acting persistent. like I had them. So I was talking with Jenna a little bit during one of the junkets, and she was like, in the perfect world, we would have been like a thing, a little winky thing, which we at Pride would love. What are your, do you think you and Wednesday would make a good couple? Hey, yeah. I always say, and they were roommates, mm. so. Opposites of trash. Yeah, exactly, exactly, <laughs> you know what I mean? And they were roommates. I mean, yes. That's what I always so say. Hunter, tell us about your character, because you go through some ups, downs, some all around, <laughs> but all under the guise of an assuming city boy, so tell us about him. Yeah, uh, 
uh, it was funny. Are, are we, <laughs> wait, sorry. Are we, are we doing spoilers? Uh, try to be as vague as possible. Um, it was funny, like when we everyone we got there, everyone had to do training for all their like special powers, and I was like, well, I'm a barista, and I'm not even supposed to be very good at it. My first scene is breaking an espresso machine, um, but playing Tyler was amazing, and it was fun because he's so different than I am. Uh, wears a lot of plaid. Well, it's funny because he's different in that he's a normie. <laughs> so how does that kind of differ from your your aesthetic? Um, oh, we differ from my aesthetic completely, and I mean even the way we talk and walk and interact with people. And it was fun being kind of the outsider in a show about outsiders. I felt like Tyler kind of was the eyes for the audience in the show, and like reacting to all this crazy stuff happening at Nevermore with Wednesday. Tell us how excited you are for this premiere to finally be here, and you get to see the fruits of your labor. I couldn't put it into words. I've literally been waiting a year and a half. So imagine all that time stewing and just marinating in this <laughs> anticipation. I'm so excited to be here now. Tell us about your character and specifically what her power is. So Bianca is a siren, which means she has the ability to magically persuade people with her words. Uh, so she is naturally charming and she's naturally magnetic, but she has a little bit of spice at the end of it, so she can command people. I was going to say it kind of gets her in trouble a little bit. How do you feel like she kind of feels with Wednesday coming into onto the scene where she was originally Queen Bee? I mean, she feels threatened and she feels insecure because, not because Wednesday is competition, but more so because Bianca sees a lot of herself in Wednesday, right? And so it's also being confronted with the things that you don't like and trying to make sense of it. I love that. So you get to do some singing. Tell us about that process. How, how how did that work out for you? Well, we actually all took lessons. All the sirens took lessons together, and that was really, really fun and bonding. <laughs> Can I say that choir practice originally? <laughs> I was like, yes, this yeah, is great. Yeah, 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 no, know. And it was funny because, like, Ollie uh, can't really dance at all, but so we were, like, trying to do it in our rehearsals or in, in, in our lessons, but then we just put it into the into the show, so you kind of see me being offbeat. It was fun. <laughs> it's so fun. Tell us about being in this this uh, project. I mean, it's incredible, you know, not just the work itself, but like the people involved and everything. Uh, obviously, there is the project, which is like so cool. The writing of the show is incredible. The world that Tim and his team, Mark, have built is like, it's absolutely incredible. Um, and yeah, it's been an amazing experience. Tell me about your character and specifically the power that they have. Right, so, Kent is a mermaid, mm -hmm. so as well as singing very well, he uh, also is a master swimmer. If he touches water or jumps into water, the tail comes out. Very fast swimmer. Um, not so intelligent, unfortunately, old <laughs> Kent. Uh, he's like probably the, uh, the the henchman of the group, but we discussed this with Jonna, who's my twin in the show. He's like supposed to be the henchman, but in actual fact, she, you know, she wears the trousers. So. Oh, definitely. And I, I was going to say, kind of get into some shenanigans with that tail. And so we kind of see the dark side of the Merman era. Absolutely. Very cool. So if you were to talk with someone who was feeling bad about being different, what would you say to that? I'd say just embrace your difference, you know? The world is it's, uh, such a boring place when we're all the same. Imagine everyone walking out of a factory that looks exactly the same. Like, whatever makes you unique and different, embrace it. Like, yes. that's what makes the world a beautiful place. You are a man of the bees. I am a man of the bees. Tell me what it is. Yes, tell Tell us about your character. Eugene is, I guess he's like, he's this, I mean, I think everyone has their quirks. I feel like Eugene's just a quirky loner in a sad, but like kind of funny way. He, uh, he's kind of more, he's better friends with animals and bugs than anyone else. And so, um, yeah, I think he's just he's a bit lovable because, you know, he's, you have to feel a bit bad for him, you know? But like, yeah, I think he kind of comes into his own throughout the series, yeah. Well, one thing I love about him is he accepts being different. He yeah. is different. He's got his own lane and he loves it over there. He's having a great time. Yeah. Of course, with Pride.com, you know, we deal with a lot of people who are different, naturally. Right, right. What are some of the great things about being different and specifically about Eugene being the way he is? I think Eugene kind of doesn't, isn't held back by any social restraints. I think he can just kind of express himself in whatever way he wants to, whatever he wants. Because yeah. no one, no one's there to judge him because he has no one with him. <laughs> and although it's sad, at least he gets to do whatever, like, his mind is, like, set to do. Well, thank you.
thing, but we do see that he gets some friends we later do. on he down the road. He kind of makes his group, I guess, yes. the people that accept him. Yeah. And it's always good him. to be friends with people that accept him.